Hey there. Thank you so much for joining me for this special look at my VR motion capture solution for Unreal Engine. I've been working on this project for the last few months, and I'm very excited to share it with everyone. It's a really cool way to drive characters live in Engine using Steam VR hardware. So right now I'm using Vive trackers, index controllers, and an iPhone for the face. It's very easy to set up, and I wanted to walk you through that process live right now. So what we have here is a blank scene, blank in the sense that there's nothing VR mocap related to it. So this is the VR mocap folder. This is the directory you're going to be getting from GitHub. And it has these four components here. These are the most important components for creating a scene. Um, so that's why they're in the root directory. I'm going to drag in our player pawn, and we're going to want to auto-possess on start. So we're going to change that to player zero. There's also a game mode if you want to possess a pawn that way, but uh, I find that one very easy to do. So we've got here the live link sources for the different trackers. So this is the most laborious part of this project. You have to make sure that live link is installed. So if you don't have it, go into plugins, live link here. It's already installed for me, but uh, you'll want to make sure you have that. And what you want to do is either power up all the trackers at once and start occluding them so you can see which uh, tracker corresponds to what serial number. So for instance, if we click on this, that's that tracker's kind of device ID. So you want to make sure you know what tracker is going to go on what part of the body. These need to correspond. So once that's set up though, once, you don't need to touch it again. But uh, just a note there. Also, I have here the iPhone, which is called Triple Camera Guy. Shout out to uh, Davey. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to turn on debug strings. So there we go. Uh, debug strings will allow us to see the in-game interface as well as strings that are important for debugging. So if you're new to the project, I'd recommend turning that on. So let's find an actor. I'm just going to go in here, going to grab Jimbo. Now I've only done two different things to this uh, blueprint here. One is I made the X forward, so you can see I just rotated the actor um, so that the X is forward. And if we move this down, we also have this mocap actor component. So this is a component you're going to want to add to all your actors. This allows the player pawn to see it and know that it can possess this, this character. So right now I have is mocap target, and that's defaults to on, but if you have, say, several actors in the scene, you don't want them to uh, be motion captured uh, sources, then you just turn that off. And we also have the different rig types. So we have got character creator, metahuman, the mannequin, and a custom. So if you have your own different bone structure, different bone names, the, choose that option. We also have a character creator body with a metahuman face. That's important for if you want to, say, get a metahuman with eye clone body for different costume options. I find it quite useful. All right, but uh, we're just doing metahuman, so we're going to select that. And there's only one other component we need to add to the scene, and that's the spectator cam. So the spectator cam will just allow us to see what's going on. And we're going to actually be controlling this camera with the in-game controls. So that's looking pretty good. I'm just trying to frame up the actor so we have uh, head to toe. But now I think we're ready to start up the Vive trackers. I'm going to start with the controllers, just power those up. And we're going to be doing seven Vive trackers today. That's quite a lot. Um, you don't necessarily need to use that many. I think the system can also work with three Vive trackers. But obviously the IK options change depending on how many trackers you get. You get better motion. I'd say five is what you want to be shooting for. But uh, we're going to be going full seven today. So, yep, those are all good. I think what we want to do now is go into Live Link and add all these as an XR source. It's looking good to me. We've got the two controllers and all the trackers. I find sometimes if I'm wearing all the trackers when I do this setup, uh, my feet will be occluded by the desk, and then one of the lighthouses won't see the tracker, and it won't appear in this list. So I find it's sometimes easier just to have everything on the floor like that. Okay, let's... Uh, get everything set up. So first piece, got this camera belt. I think it's from Tamarack. And I got an extra wide one because I think it helps with shake. Sometimes the um, smaller belts don't help as much with uh, reducing pelvis shake. And for the chest, I've got a GoPro mount with a quarter inch thread on it. And I just have some generic kind of Vive tracker straps here for the feet. These don't need to go on a specific part of the body. 
because the way the system works is it actually looks at the actor that you're going to be motion capturing and determining what the offset is between the tracker and the bone and then using that to basically parent the the IK goal into place. So here I'm just putting on the standard deviation head mount. This thing is so comfortable. I love it. I think it's lighter than my phone. Speaking of phone, let's just turn that on. There we go. And we're all ready to go. So back here, let's enter play mode and I'll show you how the system works. So you can see these are the different trackers represented in virtual space. What I want to do is I want to line up my body with the virtual actor. So once I'm fairly close, this feels pretty good. I'm just going to hit the left thumbstick and that'll start a little camera sequence. You can see I was actually way off. <laughs> so I'm just going to try to match up the body parts as close as I can. I think that's feeling pretty good to me. Let's just watch it one more time to make sure. And again, the closer you are, the better. That's looking fine to me. Let's hold down both B buttons to say that calibration is good. So here we are in the actor. I'm going to show you uh, POV mode. So basically, I've got this Half-Life Alex inspired control scheme where if you hold down the A button, you can choose different camera options. And if you have the debug strings off, this won't appear. So you have a very clean VTuber layout if you want. So we've got a handheld camera. This is just attached to my hand. If I do the same motion twice, it actually locks the camera, which is really, really cool. Uh, other features are, on the other hand, you can basically exit the actor. So now you can see my points are separated. But I can enter the actor uh, whenever I want. And it'll actually snap me to the actor, so it's a fairly seamless pr uh, process there. We also have, if you use the right thumbstick, additive blend shape. So here I'm going to be angry. If I want to increase the anger, I can press down on the joystick. And this also works for the character creator um, ones as well. Got a happy, got a worried, surprised. So you can see I'm not actually even doing anything with my eyebrows. If I just need to give it that extra kick, uh, I can do that. So let's jump out of this and uh, show you some other cool features. So I'm going to grab this camera here. It's the spectator camera. You can see here I have a focus subject. I'm going to type in Jimbo and add Jimbo. It's going to be using their head. So I can actually set the focus distance to the, be their head. It's kind of nice. There's also this uh, option for tracker controlled. I'm not going to show you that today. But essentially, you can use that to create a handheld rig, and um, that's really fun. You can actually record the camera and the actor at the same time with that. All right, so that's good there. Let's go back to Jimbo. I'm going to add a component and add a mocap actor sound effects generator component. So what this will do is it'll look at the bone velocities and try to determine when there's a footstep and uh, what kind of things the, the body's doing to generate sound effects. So yeah, let's just go back into the scene now that we have those two things set up. Okay, so since we've calibrated once, it actually remembers and stores that information. So it's very easy to enter the actor again. If you have a different actor, you're gonna have to recalibrate to that actor. All right, so here we are. Again, sound effects. I'm seeing some debug information. You can see when it thinks I stepped. And on the floor, you can see that's a line trace to see what object type it hit. Yeah, I'm seeing some levels, so I'm getting some sound effects. I'm not hearing them personally, but uh, watch that in playback and see how, how it sounds. This just adds a lot of life. There's also different sound banks, so if you want to change it so that, like, right now it's cloth for the arms, but if you want to make it, say, metal or a different sound, you can totally do that. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's the system. Let's actually make sure the autofocus is working. Yep, we can get pretty close to the actor. Too close, too close. <laughs> you can see the, the blend shapes. Again, um, but you know, let's uh, let's record a take really quickly. So let's go find Jimbo. Oops. Drag him in as a source. 
Don't reduce the keys. Oh, you know, before we record, let's, let me show you one last component that's kind of cool. So you might be wondering what this locator is. So if you don't have the locator in, it's going to try to make it in place motion, meaning the root is going to try to catch up with your body. And that can lead to some foot sliding. It's not terrible, but, but it is there. If you put down one of these locators, your actor's root, and actually any actor in the root that you motion capture, their root is going to snap to this object. And that can be kind of important, say, if you want to reconstruct the scene and say, uh, Maya, Blender, Cinema 4D, you can basically make a null object and then zero out all the information. And it should rebuild each actor to be in the same spot um, that way. And you can also, say, parent all the actors to this locator, move it around. But yeah, I'm just going to put this down. Um, again, if, it's, if one's in the scene and it's active, I believe that's... Um, See, is active. You can also say is visible. <laughs> you can make it visible in the scene if you want. Um, as long as it's active, all the actors will kind of snap their root to it. Okay, cool. Let's uh, go ahead. And you can see it's uh, invisible because we didn't set is visible as an option. Cool, we got that. Is take recorder still set up? Yep, we still got Jimbo. Let's go for it. Hmm. So you're saying a thousand a month? I'll take it. Real estate joke. <laughs> Am I right? Oh boy. That's that's why I'm mostly a programmer now. <laughs> that's the type of performance you're gonna get. All right. When Unreal asks you a question, just say yes. It's helped me <laughs> so much. <laughs> But uh, yeah, you can see we have a way to do VTuber stuff. We can record takes for sequencer. Very flexible system. And I want this to be free for everybody. Um, I'm making it uh, essentially copy left. I don't want anyone to sell this to anybody else. Um, I think that if you make a change to it, I'd like to see that incorporated into the core version and that we can all use it as a tool to make stuff. Um, I love the MetaHumans. I love all the free gifts that Unreal has given us as artists. And I just kind of wanted to make a similar tool that we could just all contribute to and use to make cool stuff. So thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoy this project and have a great day. Take care.